This morning, I am proud to sign a law that will bring an end to Don't Ask, Don't Tell. No longer that will our country be denied. The it's significant because it's the first time where we can actually show who we are, you know, being in the military where it was not allowed. We can show it. It has been a history-making day. For the first time, a veteran has been laid to rest beside her same-sex spouse. Lieutenant Colonel Linda Campbell fought to have her spouse, Nancy Lynchild, interred in Willamette National Cemetery. After serving in silence, keeping her sexuality quiet in the military, Linda's fight to secure burial rights for her spouse reached the highest levels of government. A short time later... All I remember is seeing on national television and looking at my sister in that red coat and just my heart burst. It was just so neat. My name is Bob Campbell. I served in the Army for 27 years. My dad served in the Army during World War II. We were the perfect family. The father went to work, the mother stayed home, the kids behaved. And there were three of us, uh, Linda and then my little brother, Jim. Our favorite activity was to be in the backyard throwing a softball or a baseball back and forth. Linda completed her college at the University of Oregon, and I believe went directly into the service, into the Air Force. It's Monday, April 29th, 2013, and I'm here talking to Linda Campbell. So how did that go that you came to decide to join the Air Force? Because I had a really good recruiter, and I wanted to, you know, at this point in life, you know, it's time to be straight. And so I thought, I'm never going to go out with a boy as long as I'm around my friends, so I need to force myself to be away from them. To... So that was another reason I meant be straight. And, uh, Lieutenant Campbell reporting for duty, sir. He said, uh, I don't like you. I don't want you here. Women don't belong in the Air Force. They belong at home, in the kitchen, having babies. And as soon as I can get rid of you, I will. So, that was a tough, tough time. Closer to the runway. I realized that it was probably difficult for her. I didn't realize how difficult. When she was on active duty, an airman who greets her many, many times, almost every day, with the same greeting, you look pretty gay today. At some point, the two of them sat in private, and he said, well, I'm with the CID, the Criminal Investigation. My job is to root out gay airmen. And you are highly suspect. And he says, I'm telling you this because I'm sick and tired of my job. He said, I outed a, a young pilot a couple months ago, and he committed suicide. And he says, 
I'm not into this, but this is my job, so just be careful. So he said, you can go visit your friends. That will be fine. They cannot visit you. You can write to your friends. They cannot write to you. If you have any incriminating evidence in your home, do not throw it away. Do not flush it down the toilet. Burn it. He said, otherwise we will get it. And I thought, nobody's gonna get this out of me. Nobody's gonna get this out of me. I'm not gonna talk to anybody. I'm not gonna look at anybody sideways. Linda never came out to me. Our family was typical, I think, of families in the 50s. We didn't talk. She did come out to my wife while I was in Vietnam. When Bob was drafted out of Canada at the very end of the Vietnam War, Linda and I had special time together, and Linda became a second sister to me. So it was at that point she said, I need for you to know that I'm in a special relationship with a woman and uh, I am a lesbian. Her mother reacted in uh, kind of an interesting way, I think. Oh, I understand that. When I was a young woman and Fern and I shared an apartment together and we didn't have much money and we slept in the same bed. I know just what you're, what you're referring to. And Linda said, no, no, mom, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. It was very hard for her to hear it and to accept it. Gordon, her father, understood right away what she was saying. And uh, he said to Linda, apparently, from what Linda has told us, uh, I don't have a daughter anymore. You're not my daughter. But fortunately, over time, their love for their daughter came to the fore. However, the conversation didn't occur again. It was a given, it was understood, and, uh, and not talked about again. If Linda were here now, I think I would be much more forthright about how much I admire her. Because I've, like most relationships, you don't say enough. I'm Brady Waldruff. My mom is Terry Waldruff. Uh, she's a nurse. She's a former Oregon National Guard member. And I'm very proud to be her son. Linda Campbell is a lot of different people to me. She was a parent to me until I was about 12 years old. And I think the easiest way to describe our relationship, it became much more aunt to nephew. Being a parent now and thinking back to the relationship I had with Linda, I think the most unfortunate part for Linda and I, it's all of the things that I never knew about her that I wish I had known more. The best moment in my whole life was when Brady was delivered and I got to carry him out of the delivery room. I, we walked out of the hospital a few hours later. Isn't somebody going to stop us? You're going to let us go with this baby? She probably figured she'd worked for it, but I didn't. I thought, this is a miracle. They're just going to let us have him? It was like this 1980. 
yeah. Growing up with parents that are the same sex, with two moms, for me, there was no difference. Uh, I never felt like we were in some sort of different family. I never felt like we I was treated any different. I remember we were doing a Mother's Day project. They took some melanin plates and we got to draw on them and they dried them so you had like a happy Mother's Day, you know. And I went up to my teacher and I said, I have two moms, what do you want me to do? Is it, do you want me just for my mom mom or do I get to make two of them? And she's like, make two. And it was just like, it wasn't a big deal. As far as I know, my friends never cared. My friends never made a big deal about it. It just kind of was. It was great. We suddenly were part of the neighborhood. Her parents, us and little Brady, all came over to my parents' house. We always had Christmas and Thanksgiving together as one big family. Uh, school worked out great. I, I don't think I could ever forget when she left. My mom came into my room that Saturday morning, woke me up, just broken. So her name is Nancy Little Child. That started a, a perfect friendship. And it was very nice to, you know, have somebody to talk about things. And, and uh, I said, I'm going to off limits, I am not going there. I am happily married. I'm with Terry, Brady's mom. But she was just so compelling, and I felt like my whole life turned into this beautiful picture on the wall that I'd fallen out of, and I, I was desperately trying to get back into the picture, and I couldn't get back into it. I was just compelled to be with Nancy. So I, as I say, I ran away from home. I woke up to, she's gone. And, that, and that's what it was. The bridge just kind of, I wouldn't say fell apart, it just disappeared. Terry understandably was extremely angry and upset with me. And uh, Brady too. He certainly thought of me as his mother at the time. I think he thinks of me more as an aunt than a mother now. But he's definitely my son. I know we both wish we could have been closer over those years. And her and I never had the tools. How do we talk to each other about it? How do we discuss what happened? Yell and scream if we have to. I hope that we'd both be able to say, I'm sorry. Uh, and I wish she had known that I had been there for her. From the very beginning, Nancy periodically would ask me if I wanted to have a marriage ceremony. And I always said, no, not unless it means something. If it ever should mean something, absolutely I want to do it. Well, 
Nancy was amazing. Just, just amazing in so many ways. Our honeymoon, when we first got together, we drove across the country, spent a lot of time exploring and discovering. We were so happy and we had everything. When we got married, it was thrilling. It was very special and we were legal. And you know, I've never really done anything so open like that, but we were married. We got married today. Nancy kept saying, oh, we should call your parents. We should call your parents. They'll want to come. My parents, I would have to say that they came to love Nancy because they love Linda. And Linda and Nancy were the caregivers for my mom and dad. She was as much of a daughter to my dad as Linda was, and he said so. recognized that Nancy did have metastatic breast cancer. And she fought that for over a dozen years. Linda wanted very badly for them to be able to be interred together after her death. The whole idea of it started when my mom passed away in 2004 and my brothers and my dad and I were at the funeral home and the man at the funeral home said, Mr. Campbell, are you a veteran? And he said, yes, I served 18 months in World War II. Guy says, Mr. Campbell, were you in the service? Do you have a DD-214? Oh, yes. Well, Mr. Campbell, did you know that the Veterans Administration will give her a free burial and free headstone? And, and when you're passed, you can do that too? Well, my dad, from the Depression, free? Whoa, and he gets right into it. And sure enough, my mom is buried up at uh, Willamette National, the pine trees, mountains, and Mount Hood dead center on it. It's a gorgeous place. And it, it just changed my dad totally, too. He just lit up, like, oh, that would be wonderful. And he, he was so proud that his service had rendered this gift that, and that he in turn could give and share with mom. I was really happy for him, but sad and a little angry that Nancy and I couldn't do the same thing. With my 25 years service and ours, one of the happiest marriages this world has ever seen, that we could not be buried up there. So one day I got a cold call from Brad Avakian, who was running for re-election as the state labor commissioner. When I was the commissioner, I was holding event in an event in Eugene. And somebody I know passed on Linda's name to me and said, you know, I think she'd really like to go to this event. As I was explaining to her who I was, she knew that as commissioner that I oversaw the state civil rights division. And she interrupted me. And she said, you know, I know as a state official, there's probably nothing you can do about this, but I want to tell you the story of Nancy and I. And she explained this dilemma that she had of wanting to be buried next to her father. But she said, 
I want my wife to be buried with me. And she said, I know there's nothing you can do about it. I just wanted you to know. And I told her, don't you be so sure. We got to work at the Bureau here and did some very careful research of, of the federal law. And either the President of the United States or the Secretary of Veterans Affairs had the legal authority to waive the laws that were preventing Nancy from being buried at Willamette. We wrote the White House to get President Obama to grant the waiver Unfortunately, the White House declined to grant the waiver and attached to that letter a copy of the Defense of Marriage Act, the federal law that says that same-sex marriages are not recognized in this country. Nancy was getting very, very sick in the last few years because her lungs were so compromised. They got breast cancer. Uh, was was in her lungs and uh, and she passed away on December 26. It really was a moment that let us know we needed to step up the fight. And under Oregon law, we had the Equality Act, and the Equality Act precludes people from being treated differently because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. And that is exactly what the federal government was doing to the two of them within our borders. We knew the only avenue was to prepare a civil rights complaint against the White House for violating Oregon's Equality Act. close to the end of 2012. It was before the presidential election had occurred. Obama was running for the second time. And I told Linda, now is the perfect time for us to file this complaint uh, because the president has an election approaching and this is probably the greatest leverage we are gonna have uh, to get the White House to do the right thing. And if there was ever a moment that showed the depth of who, who, who retired Lieutenant Colonel Linda Campbell was, it was then. Uh, because this retired Lieutenant Colonel said, he's my commander in chief, and I will do nothing to embarrass him in his time of need. And she asked me to wait. That's what makes America great. She once again put her country above her own needs. And after the election passed, she and I talked and she said, now's the time, now's the time. And that's when we proceeded and uh, Secretary Shinseki eventually granted the waiver. But there is much more to be done for the men and women who guarantee our way of life. They have served selflessly with unmatched valor, sacrifice, and distinction. I needed a moment before calling Linda. It has been a history-making day at Willamette National Cemetery. After serving in silence, keeping her sexuality quiet in the military, she fought to have her partner, Nancy Lynchild, interred at Willamette National Cemetery. For the first time, a veteran has been laid to rest beside her same-sex spouse. Linda Campbell. I'm a military veteran of 25 years. 
Nancy and I were together for 17 years. And she said to me, Linda, some people would look at me and they would say, why do you continue this struggle? You have no quality of life. She said, when I was younger, I might have said the same thing, seeing somebody like me. But when your circumstances change, your perspective changes too. She said, my quality of life is looking at you. My quality of life is sharing our memories together. It's living in the home that we created together. That's my quality of life and that's worth fighting for. Woo!